Well, hello and welcome to another edition of Health Solutions with Sean and Janet Needham, where Team Needham discusses everything healthcare. I'm your host, Sean Needham, along with my producer, Lindsay, and we are streaming from downtown Richland, Washington today. And today, you don't want to miss out on this episode because, you know, we have been preaching here at, on our podcast about how healthcare can be affordable. Right. And at Moses Lake Professional Pharmacy, we have proven that in 2002, we stopped billing insurance completely in 2002, almost 20 years ago. We were thought we were told that we were crazy. We're going to be out of business in a couple of years. Uh, We can't survive without insurance. But Janet and I felt that there was a better way that we could treat patients less expensive better service, and better quality without a third-party insurance involved. So we were kind of pioneers in that area. And I think it's nice 20 years later that we see uh, a lot of doctors going cash only and especially direct primary care doctors and now a lot of specialists. And today we have Brian Westlake on. He is a physical therapist that does not bill insurance. And he's going to tell you why. And I tell you, Talking to him pre-show, um, he should just host this program because he is preaching to the choir. Right? He talks about things that we talk about all the time on this show. What is our goal of this podcast? Educate and empower consumers to take charge of their own health. Well, Brian, being a physical therapist, is going to tell us how he does that. Brian, go ahead. Um, well, thank you so much for having me on the show. I, v- I really appreciate it. Welcome to our show. I'm really yes. excited for this. Absolutely. So tell us, what started your journey of, you know, being a cash only physical therapist? And just tell us, go back in history and and tell us this story. Sure. Yeah. So um, I've been a physical therapist now for 21 years. I graduated in 2000. Um, And early on in my career, I was, and and in fact, in physical therapy school, I was introduced to a treatment method called mechanical diagnosis and therapy, otherwise known as the McKenzie method. It was started by a a chance finding a a physical therapist in New Zealand, Robin McKenzie, who, just a quick story, um, he was working in his clinic and a patient came in with back pain. It was a previous patient in the room that had shoulder pain. And so the plinth in that room was um, with the with the head up, so he was in between patients, and he and he told the patient, "Go in that room. I'll be in in just a minute." So he goes in the room, and the patient is lying on the bed, inverted, with the head up like this. And he looks at the patient, and he says, "Oh my gosh, what am I doing to this guy?" And the guy says, "Hey, thanks for telling me to lay like this. My my pain's gone." And well, he says, "Well, it is. Yeah, it is." Well, great. You know that the exercise you should be doing. So, anyway, that that that's the story about how Robin McKenzie got started with the McKenzie method, and, and what we now know today is mechanical diagnosis and therapy. And he took it from there. And for that was in the 1950s, and from the 1950s on, he's been. He, you know, he, Robin uh, has since passed, um, but there the McKenzie Institute International and McKenzie Institute USA has 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 built up over the years uh, research. So anyway, I was introduced to that method very early on in my career. The other part of that method is self-care. Um, as I deliver this care in the brick and mortar setting, and the patient comes in, you assess, and you try to stay hands off with that patient as much as possible because you're empowering them to treat themselves. Mm-hmm. And it's, so it is a method that is not going to be uh, favorable in a revenue generating model where more visits, more revenue, more care, more revenue. It doesn't work like that. It really is three to five visits over two weeks and I, I got I to gotta have you at a point where you are doing exercise, where you may be pain-free because you've done what you need to be pain-free. You're on your way to being pain-free by virtue of doing those exercises. Or I can't, I've, just, I've determined through my assessment, I can't help you, but I'm going to give you uh, an idea of who might be able to um, beyond what I can provide. So knowing that model, and then over my 21 years uh, career in healthcare, having also been involved in administrative roles and uh, understanding the, the 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 business of healthcare, quote unquote, um, and and having some experiences where I um, have seen billing departments of big healthcare organizations and thousands of people employed, I just think to myself, there has got to be a simpler and easier way and more effective way, you know. So my passion has become high quality, low cost, convenient care. Um, and so 
my, my uh, having that burn inside of me for so many years uh, and the end of 2018, beginning of 2019, I applied for a PLLC and I'm in New York state and, and, and to be a professional uh, limited liability has to be a PLLC. So I, I applied for that and got that and opened my doors in July of 2019 as a, tele, a telephysical therapy practice. Um, all in, in wanting to create the simplest healthcare model I could think of. Um, and that my model is, is simply this. Um, I use the VC platform and the patients go and book their appointment online. I connect over a video similar to what we're talking on today, a secure video platform, VC. Um, and that VC has an EMR incorporated. So I do my documentation there. My care is delivered at $50 a visit. It's very transparent. You see it very upfront process through a Stripe account with a credit card, um, and I give you the exercises to do. We continue that assessment, generally takes three to five visits over those two weeks, sometimes a little bit longer, but that's my goal. And five visits, I wanna have an understanding of what's going on with you and your low back, neck pain, extremity pain, and, um, and, and get you on the road to recovery. I mean, our bodies will heal themselves. It, it, if we put our bodies in a position to heal, they will heal themselves. Um, and, you know, over my 21 year career, I have seen where people have been through many other forms of care and they come to me reluctantly, Brian, you know, I'm here. OK, what can you do for me that others haven't? Well, I'm interested. I'm interested in how you're moving. I'm interested in can we you know, the, the MDT method is. I'm going to assess your positions and movements. Let's just talk low back pain for, for, for right now. Positions and movements of your low back that make your pain better and worse. And I want to understand, if we get you doing those positions that make your pain better, will that take care of your pain? And I have had many, many, many uh, patients that have been very surprised to think, you mean to tell me that I've been through all this other care and you showed me in three sessions an exercise and I'm almost pain free. Now, I don't I don't want to sound like a snake oil salesman here in that, you know, I'm able to make everybody better. I, I would not claim that, but I'm always interested. And, you know, uh, Robin McKenzie, who I mentioned earlier, that was his thing. I'm interested and I want to understand what's going on and I want to take the time to be able to do that. And that's another thing about my model is visits are generally 30 to 60 minutes. It's given me the time to understand you and for us to, um, to, to put a, care, uh, a plan of care in motion. Now, the other nice thing about VCI, I, I will say, is they have a messaging platform. So in between visits, my patients are messaging me, this is what's going on, and it's exactly what I want them to do, because that's where I'm Coach Westlake at that point. Okay, more reps, more force, less reps, less force, to so just adjust here, adjust there. I don't need you to come on screen for a visit. We just got a quarter turn here, quarter turn there. Um, so, you know, that's what I'm about and high quality, low cost, convenient care. It's, it's accessible. Uh, that, that's my passion. That's what I want to deliver to patients. Um, uh, couple, can I share a couple of stories? Please, stories, please. Sean, would, that, would that be a good, hold, go hold that thought right there. Cause I want to host here. Right? <laughs> yeah, no, I love it. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, yeah. I do want you to share patient stories, but yeah. I, I have some some um, questions or maybe some comments that I would like you to elaborate on. So um, first of all, thank you for doing what you're doing. Um, sure. Healthcare doesn't have to be expensive and you have proven that, um, you know, it, it can be very, very affordable and we need to get the word out there about how affordable it can be. So are you telling me, Brian, and I don't want you to pick on your colleagues necessarily. I just want you yeah. to be truthful. Yep. Are you telling me sometimes there's no incentives for your colleagues in a traditional insurance-based practice to make their patients get healthy and stop um, giving physical therapy? Sean, I'll tell you one thing about my physical therapy profession that I'm not proud of, and that is a successful treatment at, more often than I'd like to, to, to think about is when their insurance benefit has been exhausted, right? Not looking, okay, what's that outcome? What did you right. do for that? That You know, the script comes in two to three times a week for eight weeks. And there you go. There's your revenue stream for that clinic. I just got to achieve those tw eight to 12 visits. And, but what's going on with the patient? So there's no outcome. Right, right. I mean, wow. we, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> the, the, I, that's when I look at a, when I look at a rehab clinic, what I'm looking for is how are you measuring outcomes? Okay. And that, 
that's what I want to know. If you are, you've got my attention. If you're not, I think I would recommend you figure out how to do that. Right. Um, so go ahead. It, well, it's interesting because, you know, my profession is somewhat the same in that, you know, you got a type two diabetic and, you know, you put them on medications and, well, what's the outcome? Well, in my opinion, the you know, and, and they might have an A1C target. Um, but in my opinion, you know, if they're a type two diabetic and I just did a show on it Monday, mm -hmm. um, the outcome should be that you need to get off medication. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, your diet and lifestyle is what's causing your diabetes sure. and the outcome long-term should be your medication free, mm -hmm. but guess what? Then they don't have to see a doctor. They don't have to see an endocrinologist. They don't have to see a pharmacist. Nope. They're, they're, they're free from the healthcare system. Sure. And my goal is to educate and empower consumers, just like you said, to take charge of their own health. Us as healthcare providers, doctor, pharmacist, physical therapist, we're with the patient, what, a maximum of an hour a week, probably an hour a month, maybe? Sure, sure. Um, so an hour a month, we're going to fix them? No, we got to teach them how to fix themselves. And like you say, yep. the body is very good yep. at learning that if we give it the right tools. So. Yep. Thank you so much for clearing that up. And yep. our traditional healthcare system does not motivate people to for self care to be mm -hmm. independent. They don't. They, they they want it to be dependent on the sick care system. Period. That's right. And it, it doesn't have to be that lifestyle change. You know, lifestyle medicine is is um, you know a, a it's it's a board certification now for physicians, which I think is fantastic. Um, and and yeah, that is absolutely it. Um, you know, one of the other things um, in this example of um, I worked in a clinic where I was delivering MDT and my colleagues, you know, were not trained like in, in that method. And so I'm seeing patients for those three to five visits over a couple of weeks and discharging. And they finally came to me. What, what are you doing? What, you know, I see you're, you know, you're not seeing patients for two months. No, no, I, I'm not. In fact, when I get, you know, if, if, if it gets to that point, I'm thinking, uh, I don't, you know, I, I'm not sure that I'm the person that can help this person. So um, the other thing, I'll give you an example in physical therapy um, that um, kind of speaks to your point. A modality of ultrasound, okay, it's, you know, used and in, in, is purported to speed up healing, okay. The, the literature on it, um, uh, I'll let your listeners go and Google ultrasound and physical therapy and let, and you, that let them judge how impressed they are with the literature um, uh, evidence based on that. Okay. But it is done almost exclusively in physical therapy clinics. Why? Because it's a billable code. Of course. Okay? Of and, course. Yes. And so. And maybe iontoparesis yeah. also. Maybe iontoparesis yeah. also. Yeah. Yes, that, that's correct. And so, you know, what, what what's driving what here? And that's the part that over these 21 years of working in, in the field, I just it's it drove me to do what I did. You know, those are those are those are parts of the reasons. So, yep. yeah, it, it I think if people this is why it's important for us to talk about this, because mm -hmm. if people knew that there are so many things that are added to a bill just because it's billable, not necessarily because it's effective. Um, it's just because there's a billable code for it and they can just start, what do they call it? Increasing the charges or whatever they call it. Um, yeah. and, and patients just don't even look at it a lot of times because it's covered on insurance. I was talking to an orthopedic surgeon because you probably have worked with a lot of orthopedic surgeons. You yeah, might know sure. this, but um, I had a patient who had knee surgery and he um, wanted me to look at the bill. And I just interviewed this orthopedic surgeon who is a cash orthopedic surgeon now in Colorado. Uh -huh. And I let him look at the bill. And of course I didn't tell him the patient's name or anything. And um, he said, Oh yeah, this is no, those are unnecessary PRP injections. He didn't necessarily believe in it. I get it. There are some people that do, yeah. but he yeah. said mainly the reason they do that is just to increase the charges. Sure. And yeah. and yeah, the insurance company covers it. And you got to think if they know what kind of insurance it is, and you, and you can see this, they they know what. Just like physical therapy, when they come into that clinic, they know. I'm just going to use an example. I don't know these numbers, but uh -huh. okay, you've got X Y Z Blue Cross. Okay, mm -hmm. they're going to pay for 12 visits. That's how many visits yep. you're going to get. Medicare pays for seven visits over the next three weeks. That's how many visits you're going to get, right? Yeah, sure. Oh, yeah, that plays out <laughs> right. as we're talking right now. That's playing out many places. Right, right, right. I sure. mean, so they're basically being told by the insurance company how to deliver health care. And that 
And what you and I have done in our practices and doctors that have went cash only is we have taken the middleman out and it's just between us and the patient. And it allows us to give better service at a lower price at better quality. And there's yep. no other industry where you can get all three of those in one place. But yep. in healthcare, you can. Sure and, you can. And yeah, I don't know if you're familiar with the book, uh, The Innovator's Prescription by Dr. Clayton Christensen. Familiar no, with that? no. Okay. I, I, yes, I, I I'll have to look into that. that. Yeah. Those, what you just said are the three things that the, conclu- I'm not giving away the end of the story, but the three things that he concluded that high quality, low cost, convenient care that, you know, that's what's going to lead the way in healthcare eventually. You know, what's, he's for, yeah, absolutely. Now, what's yeah. the name of that book? Um, the Innovator's Prescription by Dr. Clayton Christensen. Um, he's a Harvard professor. So that's interesting. You, you'll enjoy and, and, that. And there's, yeah. yes, um, thank you for sharing that. We're going to share that uh, on screen here shortly so our listeners and viewers can look at it. Yeah. Um, and we'll put it in the show notes too after the show too when it's edited. Sure. Um, there's a lot of books coming out like that. I know I'm following one at the Cato Institute. It's called Overcharged or Overpriced or Overvalued or uh, over, Overcharged, I think, okay. written by a doctor. And I'm in the process of reading it right now, but it just talks about, yeah, that's, you know, why healthcare is expensive, but it doesn't have to be. I mean, no, it you know, does not. It yeah, doesn't. It, it, uh, when you take a third party out of it, it's not expensive. When consumers have to price shop, like with any other commodity, yes, anybody out there that's listening, I am calling healthcare a commodity. Sorry, yeah. not yeah. sorry. Um, mm-hmm. I believe if we treat it like that, the patients get better service at a lower price and better quality, period. You know, and I, I will say that's been a mind shift for me um, because, you know, should should healthcare be bought and sold like a Ford, Chevy or Dodge, you know? And um, for a good part of my career, I said no. Um, but at this point in my career, I'm leaning towards... It's different than selling the Ford, Chevy, and Dodge because the 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 sales pitch is different, right? So Ram tough, like a rock. Have you driven a Ford lately, right? <laughs> but in healthcare, it's buy this or be unhealthy. Buy this or be financially not well for the rest of your life. Or buy this or you die. That's a different sales pitch, right? than buy the Ford, buy the Chevy Dodge. So we do have to respect that as healthcare professionals, Absolutely. you know, and I, and if we do, then I think putting it out there on the market as I'm doing with my business and saying, you know, I, I'm interested, I want to help you. And I think I have something that can very much benefit you that is better than the guy down the street or the, or the, or the clinic down the street. Right. And, and, so, and, consum- and consumers yeah. decide that. Absolutely. And that's yeah. the key. That's the key. Absolutely. And, and so I got to tell you, I wrestled with it at first too. And of course, we've been a cash only pharmacy for uh, almost 20 years now. Now, one of the things that it took me a few years to to understand about a free market and about and that, yeah, I'm okay competing in a free market. I'm okay saying it's a commodity. I'm okay competing on price, service, and quality. I'm okay doing that. Mm-hmm. Here's one of the analogies I use, Brian, is that I compare it to food because without food, we'll die, right? Yep. Just like sure. without healthcare, we'll die. Sure, sure. Um, and here's the thing. We decide what kind of food we eat. Is the food good for us? Is it nutritious? Is it expensive? Is it going to help us live longer? Healthcare is kind of the same, yeah. right? Sure, absolutely. You yeah. know, so it's a little bit different yeah. than the analogy of the Ford, Chevy, and Dodge because we could live without a car. We can't live without food. Um, yeah. So that's yep. why I like to compare it to food. And in a free market, everybody wins. Yep. And I think what's really hard is I've worked in hospitals and hospitals are – they are the worst offenders for not working in a free market. They don't want a free market. They have monopolies. They are protected in all kinds of ways with certificate of needs, with their rural health designations, all these kind of things are protected with their, their their facility fees. I'm not a big fan of hospitals. Only go there if you have to. Absolutely. If you're mm-hmm. sick and I have a heart attack or a car wreck, please save me. Other than that, leave me alone. I am going to decide where I want to go for health care. Sure. But if you look at the – I worked in a hospital, and it's, it's easy when you're around the system. And this is what I have to educate doctors and other people that are in the system on. It's like, of course you don't believe that healthcare should work in a free market 
because you're working in a hospital. Hmm. You're drinking the Kool-Aid with all the people around you. I mean, yeah. I, I just said mm-hmm. it. Yeah, I just yeah. said it. When you believe mm-hmm. in that model because it yeah. is supporting your income, that's what happens. The further you get away from that, the further you realize, no, a free market works like direct primary care doctors. I'm sure you're familiar with direct primary care doctors, yeah. right? Yeah, I am. Yep. And yep. the ones that have been around doing it for 10, 12 years, yep. they are like, oh, yeah, no. They get to choose to go to me or not. And, yep. you know, we try to provide value and service and and they get to choose. It's it's a commodity. And they're yeah. okay with that. When, yeah. they, when they're new at it, they're not necessarily. But I'm just a big free market guy. In a yep. free market, everybody wins. The consumer and the business, whether it be a healthcare, whether it be a Ford Chevy, whether it be a food service. Everybody yep. benefits, including the consumer. And we do not, in our traditional model of healthcare, we do not have a free market. Um, we have a network of providers that are credentialed by an insurance company, and the patients are basically told where to go. That's called a monopoly or an oligopoly at best. Mm-hmm. And when the patients don't have choice, that means the person delivering the care doesn't have to give good care, period. Tell me I'm wrong, Brian. No, I can't. <laughs> I can't tell you wrong. I cannot. Yeah, and I, yeah. No, it's it's it is the incentives right now. Um, you know, it, it, in, in in hospital systems aren't aligned in the favor of the patient. Um, and and that's that's unfortunate. Um, and that's where I go back. Uh, sticking to that principle, you know, like when you're, you know, if you're a baseball player and you start not swinging the bat well, you, you know, your coach tells you go back to the basics, right? And so. A assessing, diagnosing, treating outcomes. That's the basics, right? If 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 hospital systems and healthcare in general really rallied and aligned around those principles, we'd be having a different conversation right now, uh, you know. And so here, uh, you you speak of direct primary care. I, I am I'm extremely interested. In fact, in New York State, I'm I'm in you know been reaching out to the uh, actually twelve different practices that I've, I'm trying to to help them understand what I do mm-hmm. and how I feel like it can really. Um, be beneficial to the patients that they serve. Um, but I know what I'm up against. That thought of physical therapy is, yeah, I'm going to send him over here to Brian and and he's going to have him coming for eight to 12 visits. And, you know, my patients are, I'm, I'm changing their mindset to believe this direct primary care model. And here's this physical therapist that my experience with physical therapy has been that eight to 12 visits. And so I've been trying to say, well, no, that's not me. I'm, you know, three to five visits and, you know, with, with focusing outcome the whole time. And so, you know, it's hard to change mindsets, right? Um, but I'm, right. you know, chipping away at it. So, yeah. and uh, fortunately, I think uh, those direct primary care doctors, they, they will, I mean, they will figure it out when, you know, you tell them how affordable you are, you don't bill insurance. That's one of the things that we do when yeah. we talk with direct primary care doctors, we, we have something in common. That's what we have in common. Yeah. We don't believe insurance helps the patient. So that's what, yeah. that's our big commonality right there. Sure, sure. Yep, yep. So tell us, uh, I'm sure you've changed many, many patients' lives, but tell us one story um, where you really changed a patient's life uh, with chronic pain or you know anything like that. Yeah, I, I'll give you a, a story um, that's not necessarily chronic pain, um, but a kind of what I feel like I can do. I'm, I actually would like to share two stories. One a success that pain free, and the other I helped him determine that I, I couldn't help. So the first one is a, a school teacher contacts me on a Sunday evening and says, "I'm almost out the door to urgent care. I got raging neck pain, my shoulder, been up all night, you know, in tears." Um, I, I said, "Hold on. Um, can you go on to my site, book an appointment? Let's get on the screen." Um, we got on the screen. I put her through the, the assessment. And um, by the end of the session, she had an exercise she could do to control the pain. She was not pain free, but could control the pain. Now, I've not laid a hand on this person, obviously, because I'm communicating with them over a video. So that was a Sunday. By Tuesday, we were scheduled to have our next visit. I like to give 24 to 48 hours of doing that exercise because that's we're the exercise is an extension of the assessment. Okay, it is a treatment, but it's we're assessing the whole time. So Tuesday, she goes, I cannot believe that I was out the door to almost out the door to urgent care today, Brian. I have just a bit of pain in my neck, and we had to adjust the exercises. And by that Friday, uh, she was pain free. 
Um, and so, you know, it's like, oh, you know, I'm not touting myself as any kind of a miracle worker. I, I, and that's where I, I know when I have these discussions, I have to be careful of that. But I was interested and I assessed her and she gained control of that pain and then figured out how to reduce it from there and abolish it. So that's 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 that patient that I I know I can help. Just got to get them on the screen and, and, and help them. What a wonderful story. And, and I yeah. can tell you. You know, you can uh, comment on this, but if she would have went to urgent care, you know exactly what would have happened. Yep. They would have given her, I, 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 you could help me out with this because I'm not sure pain about meds, the... Pain meds, muscle relaxers, relaxers and x-ray okay. and I, go I see your say, primary. I don't know the imaging yeah. stuff, but I know the drugs. Yep. I know yep. they do some kind of imaging, yep. but I also know they give her pain medications and muscle relaxant. And, and by yep. the way, she might be on those for the rest of her life if she doesn't find somebody like yourself. I, I've seen those you, patients. Oh, uh, and I've yes. been one of those patients. I remember yeah. one time I was having kind of mid, a little bit lower, I guess lower black, back pain. It felt like flank okay. pain. It was flank pain. I thought it was like renal, kidney. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And um, yeah, actually, uh, I found, I was at my son's um, graduation party and there was a massage therapist there. And she massaged me really quickly. And I'm like, oh my gosh, it's muscle skeletal. This is cool. It's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and if yeah. I would, but I did have a practitioner earlier in the week that wanted to prescribe me pain meds. And I'm like, yeah. I don't want, I'm a, I know I'm a pharmacist. I get it, but I don't like taking medications. <laughs> yes. No, that, yeah. I mean, and, and I appreciate you saying that, you know, because, you know, uh, yeah, people can go down that road. And, you know, we've, we have an opioid crisis in this country that was contributed in a lot of ways two patients like I just described. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Um, the other story that I want to share, because I, I do want to kind of point out that it's not always a positive outcome in terms of I'm making people pain-free, and a, but a positive outcome in the sense that um, I think here's where you should try next. So a patient that I um, uh, was treating low back, pain down the leg, excruciating pain. I saw this patient um, for, for six visits, assessing the whole time. By the time end of those six visits, we knew what made them pain worse, the exact movements, but we could not together figure out what would abolish and decrease that pain. So I said, you know, at this stage of the game, um, you're, you know, you are a prime candidate for an injection um, surgery. I don't know as much about stem cells, but he brought that up to me. And I said, you know, it's certainly something you can check into. His big hesitancy was the cost of that. Um, and so I said, I think for, you know, those three things um, are your next option because I'm, I'm not able to, to, to get you to be pain-free. I've met, had several messages from him since I stopped um, treating him and he's, he's pain-free. He did go actually with the stem cells um, and um, it was, it was a, a, a high cost. And he said, and so I, he goes, Brian, I'll be honest with you. I wouldn't have started at stem cells because of the cost, but I got to the point where, you know, I needed to, and he's benefited from that. Um, so, you know, that's just two examples of the, my method can either get you to that point, which is the majority of the time of being pain-free and, or at least working towards that point, or here's what I'm going to recommend you do next. So, well, uh, yeah, you didn't just try to milk it for the next no. six months off visits. You realize it, yep. it wasn't going to work. It wasn't going to work. Yep. Okay. So all of us, especially if we're active, have some kind of pain, you're going to be sorry that that I met you, Brian, because I'm going to ask you some specific questions. I'll probably be texting you all the time, asking about my questions. Anytime. And, You're welcome. Absolutely. You got I, it. I really appreciate physical therapists because we've interviewed a physical therapist on our podcast before. And I mean, you guys are the experts when it comes to movements, when physical therapy, that's what it is, right? That's what so it when is. It comes to, yep. Yeah. When it comes to exercise yep. or pain on exercise or, or any kind of thing like that, you guys are the experts. I would trust you over any doctor when it comes Appreciate to, that. when it comes to that. Um, sure. So, okay. I'm a pretty avid bike rider. I'm a, I'm a I've cross country that. mountain yeah. bike racer and I'm sure yes. you've taken care of many mountain bike bikers, yes. right? You guys can really, uh, you know, when you're injured, you can, you can do it pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, if you, it, it's, it's a matter if you, as a mountain bike racer or rider, um, if you're very avid and aggressive, it's not a matter of if you've broken your wrist or your clavicle, it's a matter of when, when. <laughs> right? That's right. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Okay. So another thing is, is 
you know, obviously with the position on the bike, we are in a, you know, we're in a bad posture position period. I mean, and that's just the nature of it. Yep. And I'm sure as physical therapists, you know that and, mm-hmm. you know, but also being an athlete that's a biker, you're not going to tell them, well, you got to stop biking. I, I no. doubt you're going to say that because. Nope. Quite I, the opposite. Yep. Right. Yep. So I have, and a lot of bikers do, I have hip flexor issues just because I'm in that crouch position all the time. And so especially my left hip flexor, when I start training a lot, um, before, you know, when the, when the hours kind of ramp up on the bike, mm-hmm. my left hip flexor is just, and it might be IT band. I'm pretty sure it's hip flexor. Well, let me um, ask you this. Where yes. it, it is it now? Now here's a full disclosure here. Okay. I'm in New York state. I have a New York state license. You're right. in the uh, state of Washington. Okay. So we're just having a discussion <laughs> here. Okay. <laughs> right. Okay. So you're, 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 you have this pain. And it's tell me specifically where it is when it occurs inside, outside, on on the outside. It's on is the outside. Yeah. outside. Okay. Yep. All right. So your posture, your activity, being a mountain biker, yes, you're in this flexed position. So um, a recent study in 2020, a guy by the name of Richard Rosedale um, study uh, published a study um, um, extremity pain of spinal source was was called the XPOS study. And so what he found was that 43% of the time, there were 200, I think 269 subjects in the study, 43% of the time that pain was coming from the spine, okay? So what we have learned to do as MDT trained clinicians is screen the spine, okay? And, and it's a hard sell to patients because there's like, no, my pain is right here in the hip. It's got right. nothing to do I'm with my back. I'm that. That's what I'm saying right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's got Brian, you're crazy. Well, so you almost have to say, well, I know this is like, this is a, a way outside chance that this could be coming from your back. But can I take, you know, two minutes to just do a quick spinal screen and see what happens? And, and Sean, you know, <laughs> I believe that probably higher than 43% in my clinical experience, I have them do, you know, a press up uh, lumbar extension. And all of a sudden that pain is significantly reduced or gone. And they are like, what? Wait a minute, how can that possibly be? And, you know, I will tell you one example very clearly, and this was a patient I treated about 10 years ago. He was a uh, rock climber, very active. He had pain in his patella tendon, okay? I worked his patella tendon of things. I tried everything, and this guy was compliant. I mean, he anything I told him to do, he did, and his pain did not get better. So I said, you, you know, it was way before this study was published. <laughs> I don't think it's this, but I just want you to try this lumbar extension exercise. He came back three days later. My pain's gone. I said, boy, I am. His name was Sean, actually, also. Sean, I am terribly sorry that I did not catch that four weeks ago, okay? Because I wouldn't have believed it myself. But ever since that patient, I always screen the spine. So in your situation, okay, I will recommend a book to you. It's called Treat Your Own Back by Robin McKenzie, okay? Um, and you will relate to that book because it'll probably point out your symptoms and it will guide you through uh, exercises you can do for that pain. Now, it could turn out the end that the spine is not involved and it is a hip issue. Then that leads you to Treat Your Own Hip by Robin McKenzie. Um, there, there are these <laughs> books, the Treat Your Own series, they call it. Um, but you know, many people get better just by reading that book, which I probably shouldn't be saying because that works me out of business, but hey, I want people to get access to high quality healthcare at the lowest cost. That's a $10 book. Okay. It's about this thick. It's a quick read with extremely helpful information. And so, um, you know, this is, this is out there for people to have access to. That's it. That's it right there on your screen. Um, and, and, you know, there, um, and there's a there's another um, company that I am an affiliate provider of. And I don't know if you've heard of this company. It's called Integrated Musculoskeletal Care. Are you in, uh, familiar with that, Sean? I, I am not. I, please okay. educate us. Sure. IMC uh, started by Chad Gray and Mark Miller. Mark Miller, uh, both uh, Chad and Mark are um, MDT trained clinicians. Mark is one of the original um, um, uh, instructors in the McKenzie method. He knew Robin McKenzie very well. Um, but they actually have taken a uh, the MDT method and created um, an outcomes accountable clinician network. They have their own training of MDT and it really standardizes it and, qu- and quality assures it. It's called integrated musculoskeletal care. 
So what they have done, they have, um, they have um, uh, data on over a million patient encounters through all of the clinicians that have treated patients. And what they have shown is um, they developed an app, the Joint Strong app, that they initially use to give to patients and really try to get them to say, hey, if this app can work for you, that's all you need. But if it doesn't, now we'll escalate it to a little bit more involved to the therapy, uh, the MDT standardized quality assured outcomes accountable clinician and help you that way. And then if you get through those two stages, now you might need to see somebody more involved, but it's a stepwise process in terms of the, the lowest cost to the patient and then stepping them through more involved care to, to, to get the job done. Um, because the job to be done is to get rid of the pain, right? And to recover from the injury. So, you know, they, they, they've done a great job. They, they work with uh, a lot of self-insured companies and they guarantee a 25% cost reduction in musculoskeletal care for those self-insured companies and um, actually produce much, much more uh, um, cost reduction. But I just think the data that they have and the process that they do um, is, is, you know, has proven to be, yeah, there you go right there, the joint struggle, has, has, has proven, you know, the data is there. The outcome piece of that ADTO, you know, they're, they're proving it. Um, so it's back, how does this relate to what you're describing? Because if pointed in the right direction, you, you're, you can become a self-assessor, okay, uh, in the MDT method. That through that assessment process, one of the things that we do is called check the baseline. So let's take for your example, you have hip pain and you say, when you get on that bike and you ride that bike, that pain comes on, I don't know, maybe after a mile or whatever. I'm, I'm just making yeah, this up. Right. Okay. So that comes on. Okay. That's your baseline as a mountain bike rider. And that's different than somebody who has hip pain in sits on the recliner watching, you know, TV, their, their, their tolerance and their activity. So we have to test you at a different level than we test them. So you're based on, okay, Brian, when I, I ride a, a mile and my, that hip pain comes on and it doesn't stop. Okay. Let's, let's, let's do that uh, back exercise. Now, Sean, do that before you ride. Now go ride your mile. Is the pain better, worse, or no different? That's called rechecking the baseline. And that is what we do as MDT trained clinicians. If it's shoulder pain and this is what hurts, okay, I'm gonna give you an exercise. How does that feel? That's better, worse, or no different. So you're constantly reassessing the situation, ultimately leading that patient to treating themselves and being able to self-assess. Well, so. I, I like, during this whole conversation, one thing I've learned from you is that um, part of the treatment is really the assessment. And that's, that's, yeah. it's kind of a little bit, I don't want to, I don't want to make this sound easier than it really is, or, you know, but it's kind of a little bit trial and error. That's what the assessment is. It's like, if you do this exercise and it gets better, great. Yep. Then we kind of have a little bit of a diagnosis yep. and an assessment. If it does, if, if it doesn't do anything, then we know what doesn't work. And yep. if it makes it worse, then that's an assessment too. So the treatment is kind of the assessment tool. Is that correct? That is that is absolutely correct. Um, we, many MDT trained clinicians, and I would say this is true for me. I don't really treat people; I just continually assess them and teach them how to get better. Um, right. There's there's you know a few studies. I mentioned the XPA study in 1997. There was a study published by uh, Dr. Charles April, and in this study, he uh, Dr. April did a lot of work with uh, um, discograms, so looking at the discs in your back, and um, you know how does that relate to the symptoms you were having as an MD? He could do injections on these people. Well, what he did is he he brought a group of MDT trained clinicians into his clinic and said, "I want you to assess that patient's low back pain, and then I'm going to do a discogram, and we're going to see how much consistency there is in what you think's going on and what my image shows." And there was extreme consistency and what that therapist was able to say and what he was trying to look at in the disc in your back has an annulus. He was trying to look at how competent, meaning how intact is that annulus? Because generally, if, it, if the annulus is intact, you can, you know, things will go back into place and you won't have any pain. Well, lo and behold, the MDT assessment could detect, could detect pretty well whether that annulus was competent and what needed to be done to get you better through the exercise. So if you think about that, $50 a visit, Okay, versus an MRI, right? right? I have treated patients whose MRIs looked ugly. Okay, they because they come with them. Nope, Brian, see this is the MRI. You, you, I, I don't think you're going to help me. 
well, I'm gonna, let me put the image aside here. Let's talk. I'm interested. I want to understand how your pain is behaving. And I'm going to put you through this assessment. And there is a, a phenomenon called centralization. So you have low back pain. And in your case, I'll describe it for you. So the pain radiates out to your hip, okay? And if I can get that pain through this exercise to go actually out of your hip and into the center of your back, that is a great prognostic indicator that you're gonna respond well to this, okay? It's called centralization. Peripheralization is the opposite. I do something for your back and it sends the pain down your leg because all those nerves emanate from your back, right? Right. right. Okay, so <laughs> I'm gonna give you an exercise and I'm gonna show you how to centralize and then abolish that pain. And that actually also going back to Dr. April's study was what he's shown. The, those patients that centralized for the MDT through the MDT assessment was a great prognostic indicator that, yep, yeah, this is gonna be beneficial to you. So it's an assessment, it's a continuous assessment. So, so after some of these assessments, mm -hmm. um, I'm just kind of trying to educate myself yeah. and make sure yeah, that there's no confusion with our listeners and viewers. Yep. After some of these assessments, you literally can see a change in imaging, i.e. MRI and... So that, that, okay, so that's a great question because we don't generally do a lot of post imaging, right? When somebody's pain free, right. it's hard to get a follow-up image, okay? But honestly, that's not a huge concern to me. Are you pain-free? It, it doesn't matter, right? If the outcome is the pain-free and that yeah, I'm back to doing the things that I enjoy. I'm back to at least my baseline. And because I'm a physical therapist, I'm always going to encourage them in a physical fitness realm, you know, because everybody can benefit from that. So for, for a guy like you, you know, I don't, I don't really need an MRI at this point because I'm going to assess you and determine how to get rid of that pain. And if you go to the um, McKenzie Institute website, McKenzie Institute USA, there's there's chapters all over the world. Um, but if for the USA chapter, it's actually in Syracuse, New York. Um, but it's the website. You can go find a clinician. It's in there. I'm in. I'm listed for for New York State. But you can find a clinician near you. Not all of us are cash based. You know they. Mm -hmm. You work in various hospital systems, but it's the method um, that's most important. You will find cash. There's, there, you know, it's slowly gravitating to becoming mm -hmm. more cash based, but um, the method fits it well. I mean, I've, as you might might have picked up on as I described, but um, yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's a continuous assessment and always being interested. I love it. I love it. Well, Brian, I am so glad that we connected. Yeah. Um, I'd, I'd like to have you on the show some other time. It's been a, it's been a pleasure to have you on. Uh, so as, yeah, as we're winding the show up, um, what's your passion? What drives you? Yeah. Well, uh, personally, I'm uh, I have a wife of uh, just about 19 years and two teenage daughters that uh, they teach me something new every day. Um, and, uh, and, and personally, though, that's my passion professionally, um, I think it's come out into this discussion, um, is getting healthcare to assess, diagnose, treat, outcome, uh, you know, whatever I can do to get the system back to that, to deliver high quality, low cost, convenient care. I mean, that that's what drives me every day professionally. I love it. Now, if people want to get a hold of you, what's the best way to get a hold of you? Um, you uh, uh, Brian.Westlake uh, at virtualmechanicalpt.com. Um, is my is my um, my email um, www.virtualmechanicalpt.com is my website. Yep, th there you go. That that's me. Um, you know, I, I'm always available by email. Um, phone call away five eight five three zero one two three zero three. Call or text. I'm always interested to to share what I have to offer. I love it, Brian. Well, you shared a lot today for sure, uh, and I just I'm so glad that we connected and and that you came on our show. So thank you so much for being on. Well, thank you so much for having me. I, I so much appreciate the opportunity. All the best to you uh, with that hip and out there on those uh, bike trails. All right. Thank you so much. You've been listening to Health Solutions with Sean and Janet Needham. And today, let's see, Monday. Uh, Monday, tune in. As usual, our our Monday podcast, 12.30 to 1. Uh, you don't want to miss that Pacific Standard Time. Tune in. Uh, another great episode. Thank you so much, Brian. Thank you. Have a great You've day. You've been listening to Health Solutions with Sean and Janet Needham. Thank you. Thank you.